Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Lakeland Public Television, serving North Central Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Ruth Sherman of Community Resource Connections. Ruth has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Ruth, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Community Resource Connections is a, is a rather unique organization that serves as the center, the, the communication conduit of, of a whole range of different organizations. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Talk about the organizations that are part of Community Resource Connections. There's a, there's a broad range, and in some respects, there's times when I look at that membership and think, how on earth can we be helpful and effective to such a broad range? Because we have members um, like the Community Mental Health Center, uh, like places like North Homes and Stellar Human Services. Stellar is for-profit. North Homes is uh, non-profit. We have... Uh, even a county membership, we have individual memberships, and uh, and then some of the more typical nonprofits, uh, Northwoods Caregivers, who serves seniors and people with disabilities, um, Village of Hope, which is a homeless shelter, the Northern Dental Access Center, which does dental care, and so as you as you look at all of those folks, one would wonder how it is that you can do something that would benefit all of them, because they do have very different functions and they do um, have very different audiences that they serve as well as as uh, kinds of people that they're likely to to connect with but it's that very variety that in many ways is is sort of at the center of who we are and what we've become in that that a specialist at the dental center probably doesn't know a lot of the mental health providers or even about the science center in town who's also a member. Um, and and the, the case is true with all kinds of agencies. You, you sort of specialize like a physician might specialize in one area and not know a lot about the other areas, but every person needs that variety. So just because you might need um, mental health counseling doesn't mean that you don't also need um, energy assistance or, or dental health work coverage or, or dental or exactly. housing or food or whatever. Exactly. The, the, that's the thing that's so fascinating. You have a huge geographic expanse here. Mm -hmm. You have people who live apart from each other. Mm -hmm. Each of those individuals have different needs. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you also represent all these different, how many, how many different agencies are, are you? We have, uh, our membership non is 54 um, nonprofits, but there are in excess of 80 nonprofits in Bemidji alone. Um, that is not counting, you know, the, the outlying communities. And so they not only provide different services ranging from physical health, uh, dental health, mental health, and a, and a lot of different categories of that. You're also talking about elder care, um, uh, you're talking about economic uh, development. You're talking about housing, uh, children and families, and that ranges from uh, foster care, preventive services, all sorts of different services. You have the intersection with with state government, correct, and community uh, government, regional um, uh, authorities. Um, you have law enforcement connections, mm -hmm. uh, plus, of course not only the nonprofit side, but also, as you mentioned, there are for-profit entities that are providing various supportive services. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you actually connect that knowledge together and help someone navigate the system? If I was coming in with my own unique needs, mm -hmm. how would I first interact with you? And then how would you help me to find the organizations that can address the things that I need addressed? Sure. I, it's easiest for me to give you an example of something that occurred um, very, very early on as I was working with this organization. I actually began working here um, back in 1996, and so I've been around for a little while. And, and an experience that I had for the agency as well as for me personally really affected um, where we went, and, and I think even the passion with which we've realized how the importance of this. I encountered, and, and be aware this was 20 years ago and this situation is nowhere around at the, at the time, but I encountered a person who came into my office, a rural office, and she essentially sat down, looked at me and said, I have no clue 
what I'm going to do. I, I am in deep trouble. Don't know if you can actually help me. Um, but I have four children at home and my husband just left me and um, serious chemical problems, took my paycheck and his paycheck and lost my child care because we were flipping shifts such that, that he cared for them when I was, was working and vice versa. And I don't, none of the kids are immunized. I don't even have um, health care for them because they never left the house. They've, they've always been with one or the other. We didn't have need to invest in those things. And honestly, we didn't have time. But she was really in dire straits because the next day her rent was due. She couldn't go back to work because she didn't have child care. She did not have family within three hours and, and in fact, didn't even have transportation anymore because the car had been taken when, when husband left. And we sat down, we literally sat down at the table and she shared all of that information with me and spent a fair amount of time um, being extremely emotional, which is obvious, would, right. would make a lot of sense. And, and as I listened to her, I began to jot down what seemed to make sense to me as the first thing she was going to need. And I said to her, what is your goal? What, do you, what is it that you really want to do? And she said, I would like some type of normal life for my children. I want to go back to work. I, I don't want to go on to welfare and, and live on that with my family. I've experienced that through other people. I don't want that to be me. And so we took things on one at a time. And one of the first things that, that I did with her is said, okay, you've got to pay rent tomorrow. Um, how are we going to get your rent? So we applied for emergency assistance right then and there. I grabbed the application. We filled it out. From there, we filled out an application for health insurance. It was prior to Minsure, so it was a paper application that we, that we completed. I faxed those things into the county. Um, four children, no immunizations. I called public health and, and the, said... And the important thing about no immunizations is that you actually cannot bring those, those uh, children even into school. Correct. Right? Those, uh, you, you can't bring them into housing or, or, or any kind of, of child situation. Care. Child care. Mm -hmm. uh, temporary child care, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, w which would keep her from going to work. Exactly, exactly. So that was the next thing on the list was we, uh, I called public health, asked a nurse to come up and start immunizations of the kids and um, ended up contacting a child care provider who was willing to assist with transportation so that we could have two of the kids going into uh, child care um, the next day, actually. Um, contacted Head Start, who two of the kids were actually eligible for the Head Start program, which was an all-day program that um, they could do and reduce the amount of child care that she would have to, to pay. Um, got her set up for child care subsidy so that that would assist with payment. Um, we weren't able to get a car for her for transportation purposes, but we worked that out with the daycare provider so that the daycare provider's husband actually on his way to work picked up the kids and took them to the daycare for a while. And what we found was literally within two hours, we had 11 different agency services um, connected and working with and for her. And, and with that, she returned to work, um, not the next day, but the day after, and uh, continued working and, and is actually living out of state at this point, but is still working and still has her children and has never... Um, gone any, anywhere long term on, on uh, public assistance in order to accomplish that. She, ironically, at the time that she came to the office, she said to me, I, I might be pregnant. I'm kind of concerned that I am. And so when the public health nurse came up, I said to her, if you want a pregnancy test, now is a good time to ask. And she did, and she was pregnant. And she maintained the pregnancy, and it was it was years later after that occurred that I I saw her, and she introduced me to the child she was pregnant with, and said to me, "I have never stopped working, and I've just remarried, and I am um, um, raising a family. I've never had to go to public assistance." And she was so proud and so pleased, you know, with that. So. 
that is the that is the kind of experience that we hope for in every situation. It's not the kind of experience that always happens necessarily, but it taught us a number of really really important things. We could have had all of those services out there functioning beautifully, but this person would never have known to connect with them and would not have known how to make the conversations, you know, or set up the conversations or do the applications had we not been available to help her with that process and putting those things in order with her. And I, and I say with her because we don't have any authority to force any services on anyone. Anybody that comes to us is coming to us because they need something and want to, to do something differently than they're doing what's not working. And, and in some ways I feel really lucky having, having a background in, in child protection services I see what that's like trying to, to lead the horse to water and make them drink, and it just doesn't work um, well at all. But uh, in this situation, what we get to see are people who are, who are motivated to do something. And we have agencies that are motivated to, to find clients, and so we're sort of at that intersection where we get to connect. Why can't I just say, that's your problem, you're asking me to fund it? No, not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm not in that situation. Mm -hmm. I have means, and you want me to contribute my means to the solving of that problem. Why should I respond with a willingness to help? Um, and, 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 and what would be the consequences of my never responding with a willingness to help? I think like any organization, public television, you know, people can watch public television and never give it a dime, or public radio, never give it a dime. But we know perfectly well that the kind of information, the kind of, of presence that that brings into our household is, is huge, the amount of education it brings. Um, I look at services in a very similar, similar way. Um, you can choose not to fund those things. You can choose to just leave it alone and distance yourself from it. And, and part of that is, I think, simply your own conscious, being able to, to deal with that on your own. Why should you, though? Because it's another human being that's going to be, and maybe is, your next door neighbor or your, your future son-in-law or your, you know, whoever. The, the folks that we're talking about who need these services are not people that you don't see every day. They are people you see. You might be employing them or you might be about to hire them. Um, they could have great influence on you. You also might be driving down the road and one of them might hit your car and you or your son or daughter. And so you might feel like by not funding something, you're not working with these people or that these people are over there somewhere, but they're not. They're all around you. And so it's really a, a matter of, of making an environment for yourself as well as for them that's livable. Bruce Sherman, thank you so much for sharing the experience and the work of Community Resource Connections. Thank you. And thank you so much for your insights.